right, we got a, um, another caller that put their hand up. The last digit is 7214. You are on the air. Are you tuning in? A little minor technical difficulties, but we're going to get through it. 7214, you're on the air. Okay, yeah. Um, I had just called and um, listening to the radio talk show, and it had like the blog about the good moms versus the bad moms. Yes, ma'am. And I just wanted to call and tell you a little bit about my mom. She's my mom is an amazing woman. She is 42 years old. She has got lupus, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and a brain tumor. And my mom does everything under the sun possible for me and my sister. Like, there's not one time that she's not there. I mean, she she does what a, what a parent should. That's, that's there dope. for her kids. That's that's um that is dope. I I just know you know I don't know where um area code are you calling from? What city are you calling from? I'm calling from Kingsport, Tennessee. Oh wow, you're all the way in Tennessee. I, I had the, yeah, uh, I, well, I'm, I lived in New York for seven years, but I moved back down here about a year ago. Okay, well I mean in where I live at now in Elmira, it's kind of you know there's amazing mothers, but a lot of the mothers are starting out young. Um, is there any advice that you would, you know, want to give to some of the young mothers who are listening to help them become, you know, I mean, better mothers? really, I mean, if there want to be better mothers, I mean, it's like the way I see it, it's like this. There's people out here in the world that, you know, would kill to have children, that would love to have children, and the same ones out here spreading their legs and getting pregnant, popping these kids out, need to start using more, you know, more birth control and some type of protection because there's some people out here that can't have kids that would love to, you know, love to have them. So, I mean, people like that, I mean, you know, if they're trying to be good mothers and trying to better themselves, then they get their priorities straight and put their kids before anything and anybody else, and that includes a man or anybody else. So who, do, so who do you think is responsible for, you know, like you said, they need more protection as far as condoms and, and stuff like that. Do you, do you think the responsibility of that uh, falls on the parents, the community, or, you know, even I mean, I mean, really, it's like if it's, if somebody doesn't know about the proper protection, which there's people out here that doesn't know about the proper protection, but the ones that do, that's your that's on them, that's their responsibility because they're aware of the fact these things are available and they're aware of the fact that, you know, these things are there, but the ones that don't know about it, you know, then those ones are the ones that, you know, the, you know, the community needs something like uh, Planned Parenthood and stuff like that. They're the ones that could put more flyers out and stuff like that to, like, hey, you know, or even put on, you know, radio advertisements to come to Planned Parenthood for condoms and, you know, I mean, that's the main goal they're trying to do is, you know, to, like, kind of, like, you know, knock down the, you know, the population rate, but they're not doing anything to help these other moms out here that don't know anything about it. So, I mean, really, it's a, it depends on, you know, what side of the tracks they happen to fall on. Do, do, you, do you think that um, United States uh, as a whole, do you think that us as a country, we focus on other countries and their problems when we need to worry about <laughs> ourselves here? So That's like, a know, lot of the problems. I mean, there's a lot of people, you know, like on YouTube, people will post videos from, like, China and India and all these other places about, you know, their laws and stuff. We know when it comes to children, like, child abuse over there isn't, like, nothing like it's over here because over there they can get away with it. And instead of people focusing on, you know, how people are treating their kids and what they're doing for their kids over there, they need to work concerned about their kids here because the same kids they're not worrying about in this country are the same ones right here in poverty and foster care. Okay, okay, okay. And, um... And another, you know, not to switch gears on you, but, you know, another topic, um, I don't know if he was listening, but a young lady called in, and she said that the reason why black males go after the Caucasian women is because the Caucasian women put up with, I guess, drama and mess and, and too much. Would you would you agree with that? To a certain extent, because, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i not racist in any shape, form, or fashion, so anybody that's listening to the show don't take it that way, but... I mean, I have to speak personally because I'm a black female, but I know what black women don't put up with that kind. You know, we don't put up with that at all. We're the first ones to put our foot down. And some white women are the same way, but a lot of white women will just sit back and be like, okay, you know, well, I'll just let you do whatever you want, you know, because I love you and, you know, you've got an income coming in for me and taking care of me and mine. It shouldn't even be all about that. Like, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's just certain people. It's like, I mean, I guess it really depends on, you know, your home training and where you come from. Because some people have no respect for themselves, and some people have all the respect in the world for themselves. Well, I mean, I know for me, like, you know, I'm a big snow bunny advocate, and I know, and this is just from all my experiences of being on the earth, I feel, I personally feel that white women are more uh, comforting. You know, like, say we're watching a movie, for instance, 
a black, like, when you try to snuggle up with a black woman, she's like, nigga, back up, nigga, you're all close and all that. But with a white woman, she would embrace that. She would let the the, the dude lay on her lap, she would rub his head. Because a lot of these dudes that act like they're gangsters and, and thugs, they be watching Lifetime movies on Sunday. No, I know that's right. Well, I mean, I'm married to a black man, you know. I mean, I'm a black woman, I'm married to a black man, you know. My husband, like, you know, I'm, like you said, you know, with the snow bunnies, you know, like I'm the same way about my husband that, you know, that the the other women are by you or, you know, anybody else. Because my husband, like, I mean, he can have the longest day or the shortest day, and he comes home, you know, and he wants to curl up and watch a good movie, you know, that's definitely what we do. I said, I think it more so comes from, you know, their sense of home training and their amount of self-respect because some people don't care. Some women just don't care. Like, you know, that some women just rather have the men there to do what, you know, what a man, quote, unquote, should do and then not do anything for themselves. But then again, there's also these women that are very independent that don't need that kind of help and that doesn't, you know, look for that. And some women just, it really just depends on where you come from. You mentioned you, you mentioned that uh, your husband, which means you're, you've been, you're married. How long have you been married? It'll be four years in October. Okay. Now, nowadays in a society where being married – isn't popular like it once was. Like when I was young, you know, you got the your grandparents was married for 50 years. It seemed like, and then with the entertainment, people are getting married one month and then they're getting divorced. Um, what what are you've been married for four years? What makes your situation um, not better than everyone? But what your mindset that you know you say you know what I'm quite sure you and your husband had problems and good days and bad days. But what keep you guys together? Well. It's, it, we've been through a lot in the last four years together. Like the first year of our marriage, she was spent, you know, like away from me for a year due to some problems outside of a relationship with somebody else. And, you know, like I was like, the only person that was there for him, you know, and I mean, I supported him in every last way possible and, you know, pretty much was his trooper the whole time. And it's just like that little test that we had for the, uh, the first year of marriage that we weren't together physically, you know, that like, you know, was a big test. So, like, you know, we passed test the flying colors and it's just, I mean, yeah, we have our problems, but, you know, we just that that one test for a year has been like you know our our solid foundation for you know the the length of our relationship. To them, like you know, I told myself if we can get through that, we can get through anything together. You know, trust, communication. You know, it's all all of that. You know, is a factor, and you know, the success of a relationship that's been almost four years. All right. So was was there a um, probation period or a uh, acceptance period? Because a lot of females, if they don't get the acceptance from their homegirls, the dude is not going to make it to that engagement spot. Like, you know, it's kind of like a, a trophy thing. If if the female yeah. can't carry the dude around as a trophy and the friends don't approve, they kind of like, you know, shun him away. Did you have a problem with that? Well, see, no, because my thing is, like, I tell all my friends, you know, all my family, anybody that there is, you know, I'm going to be with who I want to be with because, for one, I'm not a minor, and two, if you're really a friend, it shouldn't matter who I'm with. It shouldn't matter where I am or what I'm doing because if you're a real friend, you're going to be there no matter what. That's the way I am for all of my friends, and that's the way I told them they should be. And the very ones that, I mean, you find out who your friends are eventually because, I mean, you know, something's going to happen. They're going to be like, okay, well, I don't want nothing to do with that, you know, or, you know, well, that's not my lifestyle no more and be out. But the same ones that have been there for you from the very beginning are the ones who aren't going to change. So, I mean, I tell them either you can accept it or you can't. You know, the choice is yours. I'm not going to change who I am or who I'm with or what I'm doing to please anybody else. No one's, you know, no one's working their ass off to please me like that. So I'm not going to please, you know, work myself to please them. Dope. Dope. I think, I think you guys are dope. Um, I'm excited that you called in. I'm excited at the fact that you guys, you know, you're black couple and y'all stuck it out four years. It's a long time. I hope, hopefully you guys have a 20th uh, anniversary and, and stuff like that. Um, you have kids, man? No, not yet. Oh, What's 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 keeping you back from um you know procre procreating? Just you know, just rather you know wait until our finances are up. But I mean, because my thing, I'm a big stickler on taking care of kids because I mean, I understand some people have to have food stamps and stuff like that to support their kids and they're trying, which is one thing. But you know, half these deadbeat moms out here that pop kids out like a baby factory without you know without having to have a penny to their name. You know, it's like, you know, they live off the government, they live off welfare and expect them to pay for WIC and food and diapers and everything else, you know, in their housing. And it's like me personally, I'd rather be an independent black woman that I am and take care of my kids, you know, by myself and with my husband, you know, financially ourselves than to have to depend on the system to do everything. So if you had a – so if you if, – say if you was the president of the United States and you can take away welfare, would you take that away from people? 
No, I wouldn't take it away, but the ones that are on welfare, if I see them, you know, if I give reports back, like how the president gets, like, you know, horse feedback from everything, but if I was to give reports back that, like, 20% of New York State isn't, you know, is receiving welfare but isn't doing anything to look for a job or to better a situation, then I'm going to wind up, you know, cutting out, you know, whether it's financial situation, whether it's finances or whether it's food stamps. Food stamps I probably wouldn't be so hard on, but then again, these same people that are having the government pay for everything are the same ones out here being chronic alcoholics, being major crackheads, being, you know, drug addicts and whatever else. But, I mean, it really just depends. I mean, because some people can't. But, I mean, the ones that are able to, like the ones that are between 18 and 24, 18 and 30 that can do stuff to help themselves and choose not to, if I was president, I sure wouldn't sit back and let them keep, you know, taking money from the government when they can be helping themselves and just choose to be lazy. I mean, it would really just depend on the person and the situation. True, true. I, I, I must admit, I know within the last two years that uh, New York State, have, they, they've they kind of stepped it up. they got the, the people um, taking programs, and if not, they're cutting off your public assistance and, and stuff like that. I know me personally, I'm uh, being I used to be homeless and stuff like that, and uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm for welfare, but I am against people who actually take advantage of it because it's, right. it's, un, it's unfair. It's, it's starving people. Being that we're the richest country in, in the world, I just think it's, it's dumb that we still have uh, starving people here and people that get welfare. Because um, you see it all the time in the news, you know, people that got money, they still collect public assistance, you know? Yeah. And they get caught in this, in, in this fraud and stuff like that. Um, one more question. I don't want to hold your time up because I got to uh, pay some bills real quick. But um, if you can kind of like sum up one thing that four years, I'm quite sure you guys are having uh, sex and stuff like that. How, whether it's on your end or your husband's end, how are you guys keeping it spicy to where you, you're not venturing out and or to cheat or whatever the case may be? Well, that's that's one thing. Like, we're very big sticklers on, you know, being faithful. We, you know, neither one of us believe in being unfaithful. But, I mean, honestly, to keep it real with you, my husband, like I say, you know, we both are like, you know, it's just like random times of the day, you know, random places, just, you know, something, you know, that young people do to kind of keep their sex lives, you know, spiced up. But it's like none of that, you know, stepping out and, you know, having pictures and stuff like that. It's just like 100% me and him all the time. So, I mean, it's just, I mean, little things that I say, you know, he'll bring me home flowers sometimes and he'll bring me home a card letting me know that he loves me or he's thinking about me throughout the day or he'll cook me dinner and rub my feet or something, you know, and that scores brownie points. Do you guys Do you guys role play? Uh, no, I've actually been kind of nervous about that, but I'm gonna give you it's, one. Me, I'm, it's, it's been a thought. I'm going to give you one that I do once in a while. And you can't tell nobody. You got to promise you can't, you can't, you can't steal it, but you can use it. Okay. Once. Yeah. This is what it is. You know, um, you get home, you, you clean up your room nice or whatever. You light the candles. And what you do is, you know, Tarzan and Jane, you're put on what you, what you lay on the bed, oh, yeah. booty, butt naked, oh, you're butt naked. You got leaves on your on your nipples and stuff like that, and leaves covering your choke. What you do is you have your husband wear a Tarzan outfit. If he doesn't have chest hair, tell him to shave some hair somewhere else and glue it on his chest. And what he's going to do is he's going to crawl on the bed like a gorilla at the edge of the bed, and he's going to crawl to you, and then y'all take it from there. I'm not going to tell you the rest because I'm a Christian, and uh, they might come right. to church. <laughs> but that's that's what I'm, I'm going to give to you. I just want to thank you for calling in and, and sharing and the listeners are listening, whether it's on the computer or through the line. And, you know, hopefully some of the things you have to say, you know, you enlighten them. You want to give any shout out? Um, just to my mom. You know, I love her very much. My sister, my family in Ithaca and Rochester, and to my family down here in Tennessee. All right. That's what's up. Shout out to Ithaca. You know what I'm saying? I got an apartment in Ithaca. Don't tell nobody. Um just uh, thank you for uh, for calling in. And I want to say this too, Miss. Kiss your mother, hug your mother, and love her. 